Romans, you noblest of men. You are the sons of Aeneas and of Romulus, the stepchildren of the wolf. Do not consider anything other than how you will celebrate victory. And it will be yours. I've seen you. Marcus Licinius Crassus devised a cunning plan to trap Spartacus and his rebel army in the region of Brutium. He constructed an extensive network of ditches and walls stretching over a distance of 60 kilometers, effectively blocking any escape route for the rebels. However, this did not deter Spartacus, who was determined to fight for his freedom. Initially, Crassus offered Spartacus a truce, hoping to avoid a costly battle. However, the rebel leader rejected the offer, refusing to accept anything less than complete liberation. It was at this point that Spartacus displayed his audacious character and unwavering resolve. As he prepared his army for the upcoming battle, Spartacus ordered his horse to be brought to him. Gripping his sword tightly, he made a startling decision. He killed his own horse, symbolizing his unwavering commitment to victory. Addressing his troops, Spartacus proclaimed that if they emerged triumphant, there would be an abundance of horses to choose from among the spoils of war. However, should they be defeated, and the Romans emerged victorious, he declared that he would have no need for a horse. With his declaration made, Spartacus led his rebel forces into a series of swift and silent skirmishes against the Roman defenders. They struck with lightning speed, catching the guards off guard and swiftly eliminating them. Spartacus's tactics allowed him to breach the Roman defenses and penetrate their lines. In a daring move, Spartacus managed to slip through Crassus' extensive fortifications, along with approximately 50,000 rebels. However, Gannicus and Castus chose to remain behind with the remaining 12,000 soldiers of the rebel army. These loyalists continued to hold their ground, buying time for Spartacus and the majority of their comrades to escape. The actions of Spartacus and his rebel army in evading Crassus' trap and inflicting damage upon the Roman forces demonstrated their skill, resourcefulness, and determination. This event further intensified the conflict between Spartacus and Crassus, setting the stage for the decisive battle that would follow in the quest for freedom and survival. On the banks of the Solaris River, the air was thick with anticipation and tension as Spartacus and his army prepared to clash with the mighty legions of Crassus. The rebels, a diverse and determined force of gladiators, slaves, and freedom fighters, stood resolute, their spirits aflame with the desire for liberation. Two armies collide at the Solaris and so the two worlds. It was a clash of military science and heroic ideals, precisely the sort of battle to give birth of legends. The sun hung high in the sky, casting its golden glow upon the scene of impending conflict. Spartacus, a towering figure with eyes that burned like coals, stood before his warriors, his voice booming with command. With a resounding roar, the rebel horde surged forward, the ground trembling beneath the thunderous charge. The Romans, well-disciplined and battle-hardened, trained to advance slowly. Romans would have come to within about 50 feet of the enemy and thrown their javelins. Then they draw their swords and charged. The clash of steel against steel echoed through the valley, a symphony of war that would resonate for generations to come. The rebels fought with a raw intensity, their gladiator training giving them a distinct advantage in close combat. They swung their weapons with deadly precision, cleaving through Roman armor and sending soldiers flying. The rebels fought with an intensity born of desperation and a thirst for vengeance. They hurled themselves against the Roman lines, slashing and hacking with unyielding determination. Blood stained the ground, mingling with the earth, as the battlefield became a merciless dance of life and death. But the Romans, under the command of the seasoned General Crassus, were no ordinary foe. They fought with disciplined resolve, their shields interlocked to form an impenetrable barrier. The rebels found themselves ensnared in a deadly dance, their advance halted by the Roman wall of defense. The battle raged on, the sound of battle cries and screams of pain intermingling in the cacophony of war. Both sides paid a heavy toll, lives snuffed out in the blink of an eye. Spartacus, his body covered in sweat and dirt, 
pressed forward relentlessly, his eyes locked on Crassus, the embodiment of Roman might. With a rallying cry that echoed across the battlefield, Spartacus led a fierce charge against Crassus, his troops rallying behind him with unyielding determination. The clash was fierce, swords glinting in the sunlight as warriors fought for their lives. Crassus, a seasoned tactician, skillfully directed his troops with precise commands, his stoic countenance unyielding in the face of the rebel onslaught. Amidst the chaos, the rebels managed to breach the Roman lines, creating a gap in the enemy defenses. Spartacus seized the opportunity, his voice thundering through the chaos. Forward! For freedom! With renewed vigor, the rebels surged forward, pouring through the breach like a flood unleashed. Crassus, recognizing the danger, rallied his men, calling for a swift and decisive counterattack. The battlefield transformed into a desperate struggle for survival, each side locked in a deadly dance of skill and will. Swords clashed, shields shattered, and bodies fell to the ground, lost in the chaos of battle. The bodies of Romans and rebels littered the ground, a haunting testament to the brutality of war. In the midst of the chaos and carnage, Spartacus pushed forward, his sword cleaving through the Roman lines. His eyes were fixed on his ultimate target, Crassus, the symbol of Roman power and oppression. With each step, he carved a path of destruction, leaving a trail of fallen soldiers in his wake. The rebel leader's muscles burned with fatigue, but his determination burned even brighter. Spartacus, a force of nature in the heart of the maelstrom, led by example. With his gladius in hand, he cut a path through the Roman ranks, his every strike precise and lethal. Spartacus himself engaged in several duels, facing off against Roman centurions with unmatched skill and courage. His sword flashed through the air, finding its mark time and time again. His presence inspired his comrades, invigorating them with a renewed fervor. Together, they pushed deeper into the enemy lines, the rebels' war cries drowning out the clash of weapons. The Romans fought tooth and nail to protect the commander. The tide of battle seemed to shift momentarily, as hope blossomed among the rebel ranks. But fate had a cruel twist in store for Spartacus. In the midst of the frenzy, a javelin whistled through the air, finding its mark in his leg. The pain was searing, causing him to stagger and fall to his knees. Blood stained the ground beneath him, but his spirit remained unyielding. Ignoring the agony coursing through his body, Spartacus gritted his teeth and rose to his feet once more. With a primal roar, he charged back into the fray, his wounded leg hampering his movements but not his determination. The rebel warriors fought ferociously, defending their fallen leader, as the Romans intensified their efforts to crush the rebellion. Spartacus swung his sword with every ounce of strength he could muster, striking down Roman soldiers left and right. The air was thick with the scent of blood and the clash of weapons, but Spartacus seemed to possess an otherworldly energy. He became a whirlwind of death and defiance, his blade a blur as he deflected blows and delivered lethal strikes. But despite his superhuman effort, Spartacus was fighting a losing battle. The Roman legions closed in around him, their shields forming an impenetrable barrier. Wave after wave of Roman soldiers assaulted him, their numbers overwhelming his diminishing strength. Yet, he fought on, his body a canvas of wounds, his face a mask of determination. Crassus, observing the scene from a distance, felt a mix of awe and admiration for the rebel leader. He recognized the spirit of defiance burning within Spartacus and understood the threat he posed. The rebel leader's movements grew sluggish, his wounds taking their toll. But he refused to back down, driven by a relentless desire for freedom and justice. Blow after blow was exchanged between the Spartacus and Romans, their swords locked in a deadly dance. The sun began its descent, casting long shadows over the battlefield. Spartacus, weakened by loss of blood and the weight of his injuries, finally found himself overpowered. Spartacus stumbled backward, his strength failing him. As the dust settled, Spartacus looked into the eyes of his nemesis, a mixture of defiance and resignation in his gaze. With his last ounce of strength, he whispered words of freedom and rebellion, his voice carrying across the battlefield. 
Then, in a final act of defiance, he charged at Crassus, fully aware that his fate was sealed. Roman soldiers parried Spartacus' desperate attack and delivered a fatal blow. The rebel leader fell to the ground, his lifeblood staining the earth. The battlefield fell silent, as if the world held its breath in recognition of the fallen warrior. The rebels fought with unwavering determination, their spirits unyielding despite the mounting odds against them. With every swing of their weapons, they struck out against the encroaching Roman legions. But the Romans, trained in the art of warfare, fought with an organized and disciplined ferocity. Their shields formed an impenetrable wall, deflecting the rebel attacks and steadily pushing forward. Wave after wave of legionaries advance, their swords finding their marks amidst the chaos. The rebel lines began to crumble, their ranks thinning with each passing moment. Despite the relentless assault, pockets of resistance persisted among the rebels. Small groups fought fiercely, using the rugged terrain to their advantage. As the hours turned into a grueling marathon of bloodshed, the rebel forces found themselves gradually pushed back. The weight of the Roman war machine was too great to withstand for long. Despite their courage, the rebels were cut down in droves, their valiant resistance ultimately unable to overcome the organized might of the legions. They met the death worthy of a real man. of the fierce battle, Crassus and his forces emerged as the victors, albeit not without sustaining significant losses themselves. The skill of casualties on both sides was so immense that it was deemed impossible to accurately count the number of dead. While Appian reported that only approximately 1,000 Roman soldiers perished in the battle, other historians have argued that the actual count of Roman casualties might have been considerably higher. Tragically, Spartacus, the charismatic leader of the rebellion, met his demise on the battlefield. However, his body was never recovered, leaving his final resting place a mystery. According to one ancient source, the rebellion saw a staggering death toll of around 60,000 rebel fighters. However, in more recent analysis by Barry Strauss in 2009, it has been suggested that the number of rebel casualties might have been closer to 5,000 to 10,000. In a grim aftermath, 6,000 surviving rebels were captured and subjected to a brutal fate at the hands of Crassus. They were crucified as a grim warning to others who dared challenge Roman authority. Additionally, another 5,000 rebels who managed to escape from Crassus' forces were relentlessly pursued and ultimately captured by Spanish legions under Pompey. These captives met their demise, likely in northern Italy, marking a somber end to the remnants of the rebellion. For all their fear and loathing of gladiators and rebel slaves, Roman writers stood in awe of Spartacus's courage that day. The historian Sallust first sounded this note by commenting that he did not die quickly or unavenged. Florus paid Spartacus the compliment of saying that he died almost an imperator.